we notice that also uh, a discourse of migration crisis is merging nowadays as um, it it is already happening and it is um, expected that will happen even more in the future that people are displaced from the places where they live uh, because environmental degradation takes away their sources of livelihood, livelihood for example. Actually, uh, those who, who deny climate change and the impacts in the world today just show themselves to be out of tune with reality, no matter who they are. And it's actually very shocking that there are people today who, despite seeing the impacts, are still saying that there's no climate change. Climate change is here, is real, and the impacts are very heavy on poor communities who did nothing at all to contribute to global warming. This is the justice issue about the whole climate impact. Because those who did not cause it are suffering disproportionately from the impacts. And in fact, the policymakers are placing the burden of action on poor communities, on vulnerable communities who never contributed to global warming. And this again, we say it's a question of justice and that it needs to be addressed. The, the impacts are coming from, especially from extractive activities, because we're having too much extraction of water resources, extraction of oil and pollution from oil spills, uh, coastal erosion, which is compounded by movement of infrastructure for extractive industry. So really, um, some of us believe that transnational corporations have extracted enough resources. They should stop further extraction. And now is the time to invest in restoring the environment because the damage has been enormous. And the damage has not, I mean, the extractive activity is built by the thinking that nature is just an object to be exploited, to be transformed, to be exchanged for profit, and not anything to be respected. That we are superior to nature. We want to make nature more efficient. And by all the actions and activities of human beings, we are compounding the problem of global warming. And now to take actions to stop climate change would mean, for example, to keep the carbon in the ground, to keep the oil in the ground. Because once you extract it, you're going to burn it. You're going to release more carbon into the atmosphere. And this does not show that we understand the enormity of the problem that we're confronted, confronted with right now. What do you think is the relationship between the capitalist system, extractivism, and forced migrations in this context? Uh, right. Um, the connection between forced migration, extract, extractivism, and overexploitation of nature is so real and that it's a direct relationship. When communities are contaminated in a destroyed in a way that people cannot make livelihoods, people cannot live off the gifts of nature, people are forced to move. And we're finding a situation where political powers in all are, are so aligned with extractive companies and that people are totally ignored. The people on the ground are totally ignored uh, because of profit. And so capitalism is more, um, has pervaded even the thinking of policymakers. Because when they think of solution to climate change, they think about market mechanism. And market environmentalism is compounding the problem of, of the, I would say, marketization of nature. Because nature has been commodified. And so you have the direct connection between the exchange of natural goods for capital, or uh, placing value of nature, which intensifies exploitation and intensifies the overlooking of communities of people. So people are totally, more or less, the basis for survival is being eliminated by the pursuit of capital. And so the, direct, the connection between capitalism, the forces of uh, globalization, of profit, of of goods and not of humans, these are the problems that really co compound the migration problem. And so we, in Nigeria, we have two key pushes. One is that the Lake Chad, which is an inland water lake in northern part of the country, is drying up because of global warming. It's just about 10% of the size it was in the 1960s. So farmers and pastoralists are forced to migrate downwards. 
Now on the coastal line, extractivism, especially in the oil sector, extraction of gas and crude oil, pollution of the environment, movement of equipment, is, has led to massive coastal erosion and pollution and displacement of fishers and farmers. So people are also forced, forced to migrate. So we have people forced to migrate from the south, people forced to migrate from the north, and we're having a lot of conflict in the middle section of the country, as should be expected. And then, of course, those who cannot afford to get caught in that conflict in the middle, in the middle of the country are looking for ways out of the country, crossing the desert, crossing the Mediterranean Sea. These are all forced by, the, forced by climate, climate forces. Do you see struggles, new kind of struggles emerging from these conflicts uh, or maybe against uh, extractive companies? Uh, so definitely the movements of people coming together to struggle against the forces that are causing global warming. Uh, we have social forces that were never expected to come together to work together in powerful ways that are coming together. We're having fishers who are watching out the sea and campaign against oil extraction, against mining in the sea. These are normally people would not think about fishers as concerned about anything except clean water, but they're concerned about the future, concerned about their livelihoods, and they are coming together. We have a lot of movements coming together to campaign in a innovative, imaginative ways that we never saw before. We are seeing desperate communities who are taking their destiny there and demanding that. There should be enough of, enough of degradation, enough of destruction, because there's a direct link between the two ends of the pipeline. It's a link between where resources are being extracted and where resources are being used, and in the middle where the resources, are, resources are being transformed. And so people are attacking these forces from both ends. And this is where we have the potential for global solidarity at both ends of the pipe and also in the middle of the pipe. Well, we, we've had great leaders in the anti on the post-colonial movement who have really hammered on the fact that we have to change people's mentality not just the people on the grassroots but people at leadership positions and also uh, even transnational corporations they have to be fought because right now colonialism is alive and well colonialism has not ended it's just that governments are now running the show on behalf of Corporation, or, co or sometimes corporation run the show on behalf of governments, on behalf of former imperial masters. So the struggle now is to dismantle this, dismantle corporations and stop the corporate capture of government, St stop corporate capture of global multilateral spaces, so that people can think like humans, people can think and know what affects other people. This, this is a big challenge. I think, I think this is the direction that campaigns have to intensify because corporations, sometimes they claim to be human, to have the same rights as human beings, but they don't want to receive the punishment that human beings receive when they commit crimes. So we need crimes, you need crimes like ecocide to be recognized at the same level as war crimes, as crimes against humanity, so that when corporations commit such crimes, they should be, the directors of the corporations should be held personally liable for the environmental degradation, but right now, they just hide behind military, behind the corporate shield, and you know they are not accepting accountability or responsibility for all the crimes they are committing. So the, the direction of the struggle now is to to reform or re to change the legal framework so that co corporate leaders should be held personally accountable for the great crimes they are committing around the world, and also corporations should be held. I mean. Um, their goods and their whatever the assets are should be sold and now is the time to begin the cleanup of the commission the mine pits the oil wells stop the gas flaring all the all the location the crime scenes where profit has been extracted we have to visit all of them and hold the corporation accountable for the crimes they've done otherwise mother earth is sunk <laughs>